In this video, I want to talk about what the principle of transmissibility is. Now, I've listed the definition or the principle right here, but in this video, I want to go over a very simple explanation of this principle of transmissibility. I want to talk about why this principle works. I want to break down this actual definition right here, and then I'll end with why this principle of transmissibility is important and how we're going to use it in our study of vector statics. So to kick things off, the principle of transmissibility basically states that the conditions of equilibrium of a rigid body will remain the same if the point of application of any external force or forces are moved along their same line of action, granted that the force or forces have the same magnitude and direction. Okay, there's a lot there. So let's try to break this down and I want to start off by doing a very, very simple explanation. So let's say you have this ground, and on top of this ground, you have a box. So this is the ground, and here we have a box. Now, we're going to assume that this box is a rigid body, so any external forces applied to this box is not going to cause the box to deform, but it may cause the box to move. So let's say that I went and I applied a 10 Newton force right here on the left side of the box. Now you can sort of see that the box will be inclined to move to the right. Now, the principle of transmissibility basically states that, well, if I copied over this scenario and I pasted it right over here, and instead of applying the 10 Newtons, to these, the left side of this box, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move it and I'm going to apply it to the right side of the box. Now, this 10 Newton should probably be over there, but this is basically the principle of transmissibility. It states that the conditions of equilibrium of this rigid body is going to stay the same if we applied the force over here on the left side of the box or we applied it to the right side of the box or anywhere along this line of action. So if we wanted to take this a little bit further, let's say this box and the or the surface of this ground and the box has some friction force. So you can see that in this first scenario that there's going to be a force of friction applied to the left, right? It's counteracting this 10 Newton force. Now, whether we applied that uh, 10 Newtons over here or over here, this force right here, this friction force, which I'll draw this way and I'll just label F of F, force of friction, is going to be exactly the same in both scenarios, whether the 10 Newtons is applied over here or it's applied over there. Okay, so you might be asking, well, why does this work? Well, let's go back to this box example and I'll redraw that here. And I'm going to make this box a little bit bigger. So this is a box sitting on the ground. And here's why it works. And it's kind of mind-blowing. That's a little bit of sarcasm, but we'll get to it. Let's say, let's say I applied a 10 Newton force right here to the right side of the box. So this is 10 Newtons. This says, so this is 10 Newtons over here. Now, the way that this works, the way that I can sort of prove to you that it works is sort of like looking at an equation. So if you had an equation, let's say x equals y plus 7, and to one side of the equation, I added 3, but to the other side of the equation, I subtracted 3, just like that. You can sort of see that, well, if I did this, this is perfectly valid. The negative 3 and the 3 cancel out, so I'm sort of left with the same equation. I can apply this uh, principle or idea over on this scenario that we have right here. So let's say we have this 10 Newtons acting on the right side of the box. Now what I'm going to do is basically blow your mind. Um, I'm going to go into this uh, box right here, and over here, right over here, I'm going to apply, I'm going to add the same force here, which is 10 Newtons, and I'm also going to subtract 10 Newtons. So this is going the opposite direction. And so because this vector is pointing this way, this vector is pointing this way, and this vector right here is pointing that way, 
you can see that this is perfectly valid because I'm essentially adding zero newtons to this whole system, right? 10 newtons this way, 10 newtons that way, these two cancel out. Now, the interesting thing is that this 10 newtons going this way can cancel out with either this 10 newtons or this 10 newtons, right? They have these two force vectors right here have the same magnitude and they have the same direction. And all three of these vectors are acting along the same line of action right here. So I could say that this vector right here cancels out with this vector right here. So I'm going to erase both of those vectors. And you can see that the system still has a 10 Newton force acting to the right. And that's super cool because we could have we could have uh, applied that zero newtons of force, right? This 10 newtons this way and then 10 newtons that way anywhere along this line. And we would have gotten the same scenario at the end. We would have had 10 newtons acting to the right anywhere along this line of action. So that's why the principle of transmissibility works. And I think that's kind of super cool. So now let's break down this principle here a little bit further and start to understand some of these terms like conditions of equilibrium, rigid body, line of action. And we sort of touched on those in these examples right here, but I wanna take this a little bit further. Okay, so I've drawn this system right here. This is, you can imagine, um, some kind of a bar or structural element that is rigid, so this thing will not deform. And I've drawn two reaction forces on the left and the right sides, and I've applied a force F right at the midpoint acting straight down to this rigid body. Now, when the principle of transmissibility stated that the conditions of equilibrium of a rigid body will remain the same if the point of line of application of any external forces are moved, well, that really means, well, one, we need to make sure that this uh, body that we're studying is a rigid body, so it will not deform. It can move, but it will not deform. Now, the conditions of equilibrium, those, all that means is just that external forces and any moments uh, will remain in balance as some force moves along its line of action. So whether or not this force is applied over here or it's applied to the bottom or it's applied starting from the center of that beam uh, downwards, as long as this force has the same magnitude and the same direction and it's acting on this line of action, the entire system will still remain balanced and these two reaction forces will have the same values regardless of where that force is applied. So you can sort of intuitively see that if this was, let's say, I don't know, 12 newtons, you can sort of see that RA is about six newtons and RB is about six newtons. Now that is true regardless of where this force is along the line of action. So if I move this to the bottom of the bar, well, you can see that RA and RB will still be six newtons. Or if I move this force somewhere in the middle of the bar, well, again, this is still gonna be six newtons and this is still gonna be six newtons. Okay, cool, so now that we sort of understand the principle a little bit more, uh, I wanna finish off by basically answering why is this important? Okay, and the way that I'm gonna answer that question about why the principle of transmissibility is important is through this little example right here. So a uh, word of warning, I am gonna introduce uh, a concept of a moment or a rotational force right here. And if you don't understand what that is, don't worry, we are going to officially cover that in a few videos from now. But for now, we can sort of see that in this situation, we have the ground right here, and this is all concrete. So it's just this huge uh, slab of concrete. And inside of that concrete, we have this rigid pole that's stuck in the concrete. So it's attached to the ground right here, and it is not going to move. Now, I'm gonna state that the pole itself is rigid. And to the top of this pole, we have this force F being applied right at the top uh, over to the right. So intuitively, you can sort of see that if we applied a force right here, that is going to cause the pole to sort of rotate this way, right? But the pole is attached to this concrete ground, so it's not actually going to move, but there is going to be some kind of rotational force right here. 
and that rotational force I will just call M. Now you can also see that because the pole is rotating sort of this way, the concrete is going to provide an equal and opposite force to keep this entire system in equilibrium. So that I will also call M and I'll draw that rotational vector in the opposite direction. So you can see that this force is causing this pole to rotate this way and that causes the ground to provide uh, a additional moment force to keep this system in equilibrium. Now you might be thinking, well, how does that work? The moment forces are over here, right, right where the pole is attached to the ground, but this force is all the way up and to the right, so it's, it's over here. Why does this still cause this sort of a force? Well, I'm glad you asked. It is because of the principle of transmissibility. So remember, this is a rigid body, and to the rigid body, we're applying a force. Now, this force can move anywhere along its line of action. So it can be over here, it could be over here, it could be over here, it doesn't matter. The line of action for this force is right there. And because that line of action is right there, we can sort of see the perpendicular sort of area where this moment force is being applied is right there. And a moment is a rotational force, or in physics terms, a torque. And a torque requires a force times some distance. And that distance is right there. So because we can move this force anywhere along this line of action, we can calculate the moment or the rotational force caused by this force right over here because we can draw a straight vertical line to this line's force of action.